Hello, hello, Jamar Shah coming to you from Frederick, Maryland. And today I'm really excited because I'm with Winnie Hahn of Digital Bard. And you're so handsome. Oh gosh. You talk about <laughs> professionalism. Like this is the epitome. I feel like I am so intimidated right now because you see all this? This is like the real deal while I have my camera phone. But anyways, we are on episode 18 of the Valor Lives interview series. 19. Okay, 19 of the Valor Lives interview series. And why am I doing what I'm doing? Number one, because there's successful people who deserve to have their story told. Number two, to let you know that there's people out there who need to hear successful stories. And number three, to let you know you could go out there with a selfie stick and a camera phone and impact your community. So just like always, 10 minutes or less, no, inter or no special lighting, no special effects, no editing, raw and uncut in a professional studio today. <laughs> so, Whitney. <laughs> Jamal is nervous that I'm not helping. I am very nervous. I used to work with this lady, and she That's taught true. me everything I know and the skills that I am not using right now. Otherwise, I wouldn't be using my iPhone for this. But anyways, so Wendy, why do you do what you do? What, in terms of making you nervous? No, I do what I do no, just to, no. In terms of I'm here for awesome comic business. relief. Why do I do what I do? I got into the business for all the wrong reasons, but I keep it. Because I like telling stories and I like developing my team. I like developing the people around me. Like I find every time I set goals, that's really what it's about. Uh, it's not setting revenue goals is almost secondary to figuring out how to help you maximize your skills if you're on my staff or if you're my interview subject. It's coaxing you out of your shell and saying, you know, tell me what makes you tick. So usually I'm in your role. Usually I'm doing what you're doing. Yes, I know. I know. Uh, what has been the proudest moment of your career? Well, um, that's kind of hard to quantify. I was honored by the advertising community. The American Advertising Federation of Greater Frederick last year gave me a Crystal Prism Award, which means that they think I've been a good influence on other people in the advertising community, and uh, a peer and a mentor and a generally okay person. So that was, that was a surprise and very gratifying, particularly since the nomination came from one of my employees. So to know that that, that was from inside my house, you know, that was, that was kind of nice. Um, but I have really, really special moments that happen every week when somebody on my team will show me something they've been working on. I'm like, oh my God, that's awesome. I never... That didn't come from me, that came from you, and way to go. That's, I like that, I like that a lot. That makes my tail wag. Right. What has been one of the lowest moments of your career? Oh man, I'm in charge of business development at the company, and I have my company family to care for. And so when we're in a business development slump, when sales are down, I seriously considering, consider getting a real job. I seriously have to wonder if I'm any good at this. And I've been doing this 11 years. Now we haven't closed and I haven't got another job, so I don't know if that's luck or, or talent or being stubborn, but th that's a low time for me because I have people counting on me and I don't want to let them down. Well, I'll tell you, you do have a real job and what you do <laughs> matters, so don't ever say that again. So how do you build team culture? How, well, first of all, how many team members do you have here? We have eight, including me. Okay, and how do you build team culture where people are not ripping each other's hair out? We, that's a really good question. We actually hire with that in mind. So it starts with hiring. Um, and one of the phrases we use when we're evaluating new candidates is, do we think they'll protect the family? So it starts there. Um, we like curious people. We like people that are huggable. I mean, I've touched you like a half a dozen times already in this interview. And, and it's not to say that everybody has to be a hugger, but if you are... Trusting enough with somebody, uh, if you're open enough with somebody that you could give or receive a hug and have it feel authentic, that's a good sign. And so um, that's that's kind of what we try to bring on board. And then we just pay attention to each other. Uh, uh, there's a there's a managerial expression called catch people doing things right. Mm -hmm. Instead of hammering down on everybody when they're doing it wrong, catch them doing something right and say, hey, that was really cool. I liked how you asked that question. I think you're dressing very sharp today, whatever it may be. And so we really try to do that for each other as well. Okay. Where do you want to be in five years? PG. Perfect. Okay. Oh. Why not? <laughs> Who wouldn't? How do you balance work and family time? Mm, I, my mom and dad own their own business. And so from a young age, it was modeled for me that running a business and running a family are together. And yet my mother tried to really set... Um, boundaries on when family time started and when you can't talk about the business anymore. 
uh, you know, dinner time. No, we're not talking about that now. It's after six o'clock. No, we're not talking about that now. Jeopardy's on. No, we're not talking about that on, whatever it might be. So I try to, I've tried to carry that forward. I try very hard to leave the office at the office and not take it home with me. Um, so that when I'm home, I'm fully present at home. Okay. Um, do you have a morning routine, something you do every morning to get your day started, whether it be meditating or stretching or a glass of water or, or what? I have um, only recently started to define and hold sacred a morning routine. And my morning routine does include a glass of water when I get up, and then I do some exercise, which depending on the weather could be inside or outside. And for me, I really enjoy yoga. I have started uh, just a home yoga practice. There's an there's a instructor on YouTube that I enjoy. She makes me laugh, and she's not too granola for me. And, um, and so I do sometimes just 20 minutes of yoga, but it helps keep the predators in my head quiet. Okay. What book are you currently reading or audio are you currently listening to? I am reading, um, I usually read like two or three books at a time, kind of skim through uh, at different stages. So I'm reading uh, one on habits and goal setting. It's one I try to refresh myself on around the end of the year as I'm setting resolutions for the new year and setting goals for the new year. So I'm reading that on, on my Kindle. And I just got two new books on gamification which is an interesting way to motivate yourself and the people around you by kind of making games out of things. Um, when you're setting goals and setting benchmarks, what happens when you get there? Mm -hmm. And so, like you asked about company culture a little bit earlier, we have, I could share it with you, we have a little box of um, tiny little confetti poppers, like you might get it for New Year's Eve. And when we finish a project or if something really cool has happened, we fire little confetti poppers for each other. Silly, right? Um, but that would be an example of like, Yay, I've reached, you know, if you were playing a video game, I reached top score, what would happen? Well, get the confetti cannon, there we go. <laughs> and people love that, right? Yeah, yeah, we like, we like doing it for each other. What is one of your success habits? Doing things outside my comfort zone, like this interview. Because usually I'm in your place, right? So, speaking of, when's the last time somebody did interview you? It's been a while. Um... Yeah, I think I had a student interview me sometime last year for a piece they were doing at FCC. That's that's probably been the most recent time till now. Okay, so what are what are you most thankful for? I am thankful for a healthy body. I am thankful for having opportunity in my life in lots of different ways, from physical opportunity because I have a healthy body to living in the U.S. of A. And, and not having limits put on me um, because I'm a female or because I'm a certain religion or because I'm a certain age. Yeah, opportunity. I'm thankful for opportunity. Okay, cool. So now in wrapping up, we're going to do our rapid fire section. So okay. what I'll do is I'll say a word or a phrase okay. and you tell me the right. first thing that comes to your mind. I'm ready. And the interesting thing is I don't even know what I'm going to say, so who it's knows? It's a surprise for both of us. Okay, so um, why Fiji? Uh, it's just been a fantasy. Since when? For like 15 years now. So did were you just like on Google one day and you stumbled stumbled upon a picture of Fiji or, or what? Uh, no, my wife and I, girlfriend at the time, were just sort of saying, hey, where do you want to go? What would be fun? And Fiji came up. And so then came the Google and the pictures of the beautiful huts that they have out over the water and snorkeling and things like that. So um, so we haven't been, but that's, that's on the list. Okay. So uh, rapid fire. Um, Final Cut Pro. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> Okay. Don't. We moved uh, to Premiere. Okay, well, Premiere. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. Um, the Baltimore, or the DC Zoo. What about it? What comes to your mind? What comes, pandas come to my mind. Yeah, pandas, but but also in the city. Okay. So it's right. like you have beautiful, but then it's kind of all uh, locked in by buildings and concrete. Okay. And I say that because I know your family owns a zoo, right? Correct. They, they still own it? Yes. Okay, good. And I've been there once, and it was because you gave me free tickets, and it was really, really fun. <laughs> I'm glad you got to go. So, uh, how do you want people to contact you? Contact me through um, the company website is the easiest because it has my office telephone number and the email address is on there. So that's digitalbard, B-A-R-D as in dog, dot com. All right. Well, thank you very much. Episode number 19 of the Valor Lives interview series. Go to valorlives.com, search Whitney in the search engine. All her information will pop up. So go out there, show some valor. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Thank you very much.